Hi, welcome back to Educate2.com. My name is Sipsky, your host. In this video, I want to compare the cameras of the smartphone LG G8 versus my point and shoot camera, the Casio 12 megapixel camera. The sensors are pretty much similar, so we're going to do that, as well as my Sony A5000 APS-C camera. So if you had a choice, which camera would you get? Well, to be fair, these two uh, devices, the smartphone LG G8 and the Sony A5000 with the kit lens are pretty much the same price. You have about $300 worth of technology here, $300 Canadian, and you have about $250 to $300 technology when you buy these used. And of course, you really can't compare to this because this is only worth about $50 when you buy it used. So it would be unfair to say, uh, you know, uh, these are better because they're better, but we have to also look at the price. So just to summarize before I show you the video and the photos of these devices, I would say this uh, point and shoot camera really cannot compare to the two here. But in terms of uh, comparing the smartphone to these point and shoot camera, they're very similar in the sense that they have the same sensor. But the advantage I will explain more about later that point and shoot do have over the smartphone and uh, also the cons uh, regarding this camera that is not going to be able to you know compete with the smartphone as well so if you have fifty dollars to spare i think this is worth having but if it's more than fifty dollars the point and shoot camera really is not necessary if you already have the smartphone okay so let's now have a look at each one of them and i'll explain why i like the point and shoot camera and why i dislike it compared to the smartphone compared to the APS-C camera and I would do the same for APS-C camera as well as the smartphone. Okay, that's how I look at it right now. All right, let's start with the point and shoot camera. Why I like this camera versus the smartphone and the APS-C camera, the Sony A5000. One thing, of course, is that it's very compact. If you compare it to the smartphone, you can see that it's definitely half the size. Now, in terms of thickness, this is about two to three times thicker than the smartphone, but half the dimension, okay, in terms of its uh, length and width here, you can see. Now, the screen size is a bit small compared to the smartphone, but that's obvious, right? Because, you know, you need the big uh, six point, I think 6.4 here for the LG G. Uh, 8 and compared to the uh, Sony same thing here the size are similar I think the uh, Sony A5000 is a little bigger okay but the advantage of course is the size but the main advantage of course is this part here the zoom lens yes so this camera the point and shoot camera is that it can zoom four time optically so optical zoom okay so you can go from one, uh, 26 mils equivalent full frame to close to 105 mils okay so from 26 to 105 not bad for this tiny pocketable point and shoot camera that's pretty impressive I think that's one of the main features that I, why I love this camera another thing is it has a very good flash compared to your smartphone for example the flash is definitely stronger the smartphone doesn't really have a flash it have LED light that you can turn on and off Whereas this one actually have a very bright uh, flashlight. And same thing with the uh, Sony A5000 APS-C camera. But let me show you right now. If I take a picture, for example, you can see that's pretty bright. Whereas the LG, uh, it's bright, but not as bright. Okay, It's doable, you know, when you turn it on for night shot, it, as long as you stand, you know, within, um, I would say, uh, two meter max. And the light, you know, you can turn it on and it's, okay okay so you may have to do some adjustment in post however the flash on this one is brilliant you can be standing about three four meters away turn on your flash and the image quality is quite still good and not as grainy okay so flash zoom lens one of his main feature and another thing is other than you know it's pocketable the ergonomics of this uh, camera the point and shoot it has all the button features that you need whereas you compare it to a smartphone it doesn't have that right it has you know, the record button, the uh, camera button, the play button, you know, the different automatic feature button here and menu. Zoom rocker for zooming in and out of the optical lens. 
and yeah so that's very convenient and also you have a uh, built-in removal battery here so you can actually remove the battery and I think this camera can take about 300 to 400 shot I'm not sure exactly uh, how many shots you can take but at least 300 for sure uh, here we have a very tiny battery but it can give you about 300 uh, photos without any issue now the one thing I like about the removable battery compared to a smartphone nowadays is that uh, you can buy a couple of these, right? Very cheap, and you can just you know buy a couple of them. Uh, if you run out of battery, just change them, right? Whereas a smartphone, you know, all these are non-removable battery now, right? All these companies are doing that. I hate that, but that's what they choose to do. And um, so, if you run out of batteries, you're stuck. You need to recharge it. It may take you you know a couple hours to get at least halfway or full, depending on if it's fast charging or slow charging. The APS-C camera, like the A5000, can also uh, be removed, the battery. So that's also, you know, pretty at par with the point-and-shoot camera. Another thing is you can also remove the SD card, okay, which I like a lot. That you can do with the APS-C camera, Sony A5000. But of course, with this, you can remove it, but it's a little bit inconvenient where you have to use a pin to pull it out. And, you know, it's a micro SD, very tiny one, and you have to put it into adapter. And then you put in your computers and that's how you access the file now the best way uh, is actually using the USB-C connector to connection to your laptop I think that would be a better and more efficient way the reason I would recommend doing that because the USB-C connection to the laptop or tablet is pretty fast in fact I think it's a bit faster than the SD the standard SD right in the past I wouldn't recommend it when you connect let's say the USB to the laptop because it's using 1.0 USB or 2.0 and it's a little bit slow. I don't know exactly how slow compared to SD, but it's definitely the SD is faster. But with a USB-C, the connection is definitely fast, and so there's nothing uh, to worry about. So really, it's based on you know convenience whether you like to take out the SD card or whether you're going to hook up your USB-C connector to your laptop. Okay, whatever you prefer. I think they're about uh, the same so other than that uh, the price on this camera is just amazing you can get this used for under or around uh, $50 Canadian right just look how small it is with a zoom and a flash a removable battery and SD card yeah and uh, you know all these button here it's definitely you know worth a look at compared to a smartphone now I want you to have a look at the photo that comes out of this camera here you will notice that um, it's not good with uh, flare okay so when the light hits on it directly the image quality is very bad I would avoid doing that when you're taking photos uh, if there's a direct sunlight don't use point-and-shoot camera at least for this model anyway it was really bad you can have a look at the picture right now and you can see oh, it's horrible I think it's because it's uh, automatic so the software determines you know the amount of light and all that stuff and it does a poor job when their sun hits it directly I'm sure a newer model may be better, but yeah, this one definitely couldn't handle when the light hits on it directly. The image quality is just horrible. However, if it's, um, you know, well-lit uh, environment or the sun is moving away from the camera lens, then it, this is a very good image quality. So I want you to, at the end, maybe have a look at the this image quality versus the smartphone and versus the, uh, the um, mirrorless camera. You can see that this isn't bad at all. 12 megapixel, uh, camera versus a 12 megapixel uh, camera on the smartphone and now the Sony a5000 is 20 megapixel so maybe it's a higher resolution but quality wise this is not bad at all the color on this photo isn't bad but I find that the digital point-and-shoot camera and the uh, smartphone have very similar quality in terms of their image they have this digital like look to it I think it's because of the size of the sensor and the lens that's fixed for some reason I don't like the uh, photo image on these two this is LG G8 and I'm pretty sure a lot of smartphones are similar to that it looked kind of yeah it looked digital okay however the mirrorless camera because I think it's the lens and the si the large sensor size it has this very unique look to it maybe it's because of the bokeh that you might have heard of the natural bokeh that comes from a nice lens that if you put on this camera you get that nice image and the the color also rendition from this uh, APS-C camera Sony A5000 
it looks more natural compared to the point and shoot camera and the smartphone so yeah that would be something I would look at you know for $50 maybe it's worth it to have I think this camera is still worthwhile if you can get it for $50 I think it's good to have it uh, lurking around especially let's say if you're running out battery from your smartphone or just having it you know uh, because of the ergonomics and because of the zoom lens and the flash right and removable battery these are very convenient to have and uh, it guarantees that you'll be able to you know have a lot of shoots uh, whether it's uh, well, for this camera anyway, I think it's mainly for photos. Video, I would not recommend it because it can only do uh, 720p, uh, low resolution HD quality image or video. All right, so let's move on to the smartphone. The smartphone like the LG G8, this is a pretty decent smartphone. It's around two years old, but um, you know, the spec is pretty amazing. It has a uh, you know, six gig RAM and 120 gig internal storage. Uh, and then the lens, you have these two ultra wide and wide angle lens in the back, and then you have a selfie camera here. I can't remember the megapixel here. It's I think it's pretty high for one of them, and the other one is 12 megapixel, which is you know decent. The image quality, again, is similar to the point and shoot camera. It looks very sharp, and that's the problem. Like both of them look, I think, too sharp for me. I think the software changes the look of the image. Um, yeah, so I find that it doesn't look as natural as I want. But if you want to archive uh, images, you know, you want a quick shot, definitely these two is worth having around because, you know, you know, sometimes you don't want to be carrying this huge, uh, well, it's not really big, but relatively it's pretty big camera and you don't always think you to carry these camera around. But if you have this in your purse or in your knapsack or in your pocket, it's always going to be convenient. Same thing with your smartphone, right? You'll have that around. But like I said, the uh, photos, not that great. The video, however, on this smartphone is pretty nice. Have a look at the photo and the video of this smartphone, the LG G8 ThinQ. I believe it's a G8X ThinQ. So not bad. For the video, it can do 4K. I usually film in 1080p anyway, so I do comparison with 1080p. I can't really compare with this point and shoot camera because it can't even do 1080p. It can only do 720 but I will show you the you know a bit of clips of, of this camera that you would not want to use it for videos. But yeah, this uh, video is not bad. In fact, it's pretty good com even compared to the uh, APS-C camera, the Sony 5000. However, image-wise, you know, because I can change different lens uh, type on the APS-C camera. Yeah, you know, if you want to do a more professional work, I would go with the APS-C camera. But the advantage, and I have another video on this of the smartphone is the fact that you can just grab your phone from your pocket right away and if it's that moment that you can't find your cameras this is the only thing you have then yeah you're gonna have a nice photo or video right away and i think the video is quality is pretty good especially in the daylight okay so daylight this uh, smartphone or any modern smartphone that's two years even a smartphone that's four years old is also decent okay so i think Generally, you know, for videos, whether you can do 4K or uh, Full HD, I think these uh, phones are pretty good for daytime shot. It may not be as natural looking, like, you know, creating nice bokeh on your APS-C camera, but I think it's acceptable, especially when you put it on YouTube, okay? Now, when people are picky about, you know, the video quality, like, say, making uh, short films or movies, like something like that, this may not be the best to use, but if it's the only thing that you have and it depends on, you know, the, the scenes and all that, then yeah, you can use this. And I'll talk more about the smartphone later on that, you know, how convenient it is to have, you know, in, during an emergency, this is the only thing that you have. I think it's worthwhile having. And in fact, you, you need it anyway because you need to communicate, right? So having that nice camera and, and the front and the back, uh, you know, you'll never miss any shot. So that's definitely the big, big advantage. Another thing is with a smartphone, you have a very nice screen. So beautiful, high resolution screen compared to the other two cameras. Uh, that's definitely an advantage that it has. And this uh, LG G8 has a very uh, large battery. So you can take the video and uh, photos to your heart content. Now, depending on, of course, the amount of uh, memory card you have in here. This camera has an internal memory and you can put in the external memory up to I think one terabyte which is amazing right so yeah definitely uh, worthwhile I would say 
if you had to choose between the three, obviously the smartphone is the way to go first. And uh, you know, you have another extra $50, go for that one. Now, if you have an extra two, $300, I would say around three, $300, then it's worth to get a uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera like this Sony A5000. Like I mentioned before, because it do have a beautiful lens that you can get, of course, it depends on your budget. The kit lens and this camera is around 250 to $300 if you buy use. But what I like about this camera uh, compared to a smartphone, obviously, uh, as I mentioned already with the point shoot camera, is the ergonomics, right? And uh, you know, it feels really good on the hand. You have a button here, and you have the uh, uh, zoom rocker button here. You have a designated uh, record button. You have menu, and then you have different options to delete your file and play the file, change the ISO change the shutter speed change the aperture so very powerful even able to change the white balance so you can change different uh, setting you know with different uh, lamps set or a cloudy day or sunny day very important uh, when you're trying to get the right and perfect shot yeah so I would say if you have the money get at least a decent mirrorless camera around you can probably get around three four hundred dollar use right with a kit lens even APS-C camera, you can get that. And there's a lot of bargain out there, whether you look at Kijiji or eBay or even Amazon when you buy it used. Sometimes you can even buy an open box for under $400, which, you know, comes with, if it comes with uh, the lens and the, you know, at least 20 megapixel, even 16 is fine too. With a large sensor size, I think it's a bargain, especially you want to look for a flippy screen like the A5000 or A5100. I'm not sure about the Canons and Panasonic, but I think Panasonic has a micro four thirds and they, they do have this flippy screen, not necessarily flip up screen, but flippy screen and for under three, four dollars. Fujifilm, I think they may have that as well. I'm not sure about the budget, but yeah, I would say you can get, you know, a decent mirrorless camera with a kit lens for under $400 used. I think that's pretty good. Just look at you know, different spec, compare different camera, different companies and all that. I would say, yeah, these two, definitely this is a must. And then, of course, this would be great to have. And this is just a bargain. If you have the money, $50 laying, laying around, I think it's also worth it because of the zoom lens and the flash. Okay. Ooh. Oh, there goes my phone. Oh, it didn't break. Huh. Great. Good. Oh built to last all right so have a look at the photo and video at the end the three comparison of these three major cameras i hope that helped you to decide i would say of course the smartphone always wins because it's so convenient to have around always there with you right i think under 400 dollars you can get a pretty decent smartphone that's around two years old don't go with the hype you know you have to get the latest greatest camera you know three four camera like the iphone 11 or 12 whatever you know really you don't need those oh samsung s20 or whatever right like it's just crazy now the price is just crazy get a two years old three years old even four years old camera with decent camera now the key here with the smartphone is uh make sure you get a, a large ram you know i would say minimum minimum nowadays six uh gig ram with a minimum of internal storage of 128 gig and you can get that for under three four hundred dollars and then you know decent camera wide angle ultra wide angle in the back here and a USB-C good screen all that I think this is the way to go okay and then of course the next thing is you know you have extra three four hundred dollars go for the APS-C camera or micro four thirds camera now for the po point and shoot camera if you have a smartphone and uh, you know you want to shoot all the time then definitely this is a good to have, especially if you have very limited budget. You have the smartphone already. You need another camera. Point and shoot camera would be the best to have. It's because it's under, you know, about $50 or under. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to spend that much money, especially, you know, you, you want to get these mirrorless camera. You can run you between three, $400 or more. This one, $50. With this, I think it's a good combination as well because this is only when you want to take photo no matter what, right? So here you have this. You carry this around, if you run out of battery, you still have this option to be taking picture all day. All right, so I think that's where I would go for. If you want to take photos all the time, definitely go with this. 
have this as a supplement. If you're thinking of a you know, photo with some quality, high quality, then of course you want to add in this as well to your camera gear tools, okay? That's about it. Have a look at the video and photo at the end and see what you think about these three type of cameras. So hopefully that helps you with making decision. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.